Loot tables in Minecraft are used to create sets of items which are randomly generated each time based on a rough outline. Every mob that is killed and every dungeon chest you have ever opened all have their loot determined by a loot table. Creating your own loot table can have many applications, such as creating your own custom mob, creating random chest loot, overriding existing mob drops, or spawning in random loot. Loot tables are very easy to make with the help of some online tools, and today I will show you how to add them into your own data packs. Loot tables work by randomizing the final drops through an outline you will create, which involves inputting information about what item you want to drop, the chance of it dropping, and any other data. So let's get right into it. Okay, so now that you know how the loot tables actually work and what they do, I'll show you how to use them. So go to this website, it'll be in the description or in the top right corner, or you could just enter the URL, but you want to start off right off with add pool. So I'll explain how this works, but you can have multiple pools in a loot table and multiple entries within a pool. And within these entries, this determines what items you want. So the pool will randomly select the items from here, but how it works is when you go into the loot table, pretend each pool is a imaginary dice that is being rolled. And when it says this pool will roll this many times, that's how many times the imaginary dice is going to be rolled. So if I say it's going to be rolled between two and three times, then it will either roll the dice two times or three times. And on the dice, there are faces on the dice, obviously. And however many faces are on there is however many entries you have on here that are the items. So just keep it on item. Don't use loot table. I don't know why you would use loot table for a loot table. But if you know why you would use that, you can leave a comment down below because I'm kind of curious. But anyway, just keep it on item for now. Now you're rolling that imaginary dice and on each face of the dice you have these items. So let's say the first one is a diamond. You have to type in the actual name. So Minecraft diamond. Minecraft, um, let's see, iron ingot, and a Minecraft uh, gold ingot. So now that you have these items, basically you're rolling a dice and each side, it's a three-sided dice that has diamonds on one side, iron ingots on another, and gold on the other. And right now they're equal sized sides. But if you change the weight of the diamonds to 10, then it will make the diamond side 10 times bigger than the iron and gold side. And the weight basically affects the chance that it will be rolled. So when it rolls two to three times, and during each roll, it will roll diamond, iron, or gold with a 10 times higher chance of rolling diamond than iron or gold. Now, that also means that if you want two items to be guaranteed, then you have to split them into different pools. Because theoretically, this could land gold all three rolls. However, that's not likely, but it's still possible. So if you want diamonds to be guaranteed every time, then what you should do is move diamonds to their own pool. So you move the diamonds into a pool where the only entry is diamonds. So it has a 100% chance of being rolled because a one-sided dice has one outcome. So now if you have a pool that rolls one time and the only entry is diamonds, you're going to get diamonds every time. Now we have functions and conditions still. And we also have quality, but that's based on luck, so that doesn't really matter. I'm not going to be dealing with the luck stuff. So you can add functions and conditions. So functions is basically more detail about the item and what will be dropped. And conditions are, well, conditions for when the item will be dropped. So conditions are very straightforward. If this happens, then it will drop it. So for example, a blaze in the game only drops blaze rods if the entity was killed by a player. So if you want that functionality, you could turn that on. And we also have probability and probability weighted by looting. So you can increase the probability, which is basically increasing the weight if they have looting. So that's useful if you have more than one here. However, if you want to not change the weight of it, but you want to change the quantity, then that's a different thing. That's under functions. So I'm not going to be adding a condition for this. I'm going to be adding a function. So we can set the count so that you will get between 5 and 10 iron ingots. And now let's see we want another function like apply looting enchantment. Let's say you want to add 4 more to 10 more iron ingots if you are using looting. So that's basically just giving the bonus so that the looting enchantment actually works. You could just look at all this kind of different stuff and see other stuff you want to add on. So I'll go to gold and I will add a count. Let's say one, two, four, if it gets rolled. 
And also remember, this isn't guaranteed to get rolled. So now I'll just move down to diamond here. So I want to show you a specific functionality, set NBT data. Now NBT data, this is what you want to use if you want to have your custom item be dropped as part of the loot table. So if you go to MC Stacker and do like a give command for the item, then you just copy this here and you paste that into NBT data. And actually something I want to add really quick is that you have to put curly brackets around the sides if you're going to be doing the NBT data or else it won't work. So I didn't put those there and I wasted a bunch of my time. So make sure you put curly brackets on the outside. And I'll just set the count to one. And I will also make sure that it is only dropped if the entity was killed by a player. So just look around and add the functions and conditions that you want. Make sure you put the right entries within the right pools and just try experiment with what you get. Now after that, what you want to do is just go to the very top. So scroll to the very top of this section and you can just copy this and copy it and put it into a JSON file. So now I'll show you how to actually input it into your game. Okay, so now I'll show you how to format the JSON file and put it into your data pack folder. So right now I'm inside of the data pack folder. I'm just calling it loot table demo. And this is the pack empty meta data like normal. And then we have Minecraft and we have LT demo, just loot table demo. So first I'll show you how to do it for custom entities and blocks. So go into the folder the namespace LT demo folder or whatever your data pack other namespace is. And by the way, make sure this is lowercase or it won't work. And then where you would normally put your functions folder right next to it, put a loot tables folder it has to be just like this loot underscore tables all lowercase. Now go into there and create two more entities and blocks make sure they're plural and lowercase. And then into entities, you make a text file, which is a json file so make sure you turn it into a json file or json file and rename it whatever you want just keep that also lowercase and only underscores no spaces and then inside of that file just paste in the text that you got from the loot table generator and just save it and then make a copy of that and paste it inside of blocks now be careful if you are pasting it into blocks but for the entities you had something that said if killed by player, the condition if killed by player, that will not show up in the block section. So if you want that to show up in your block section, make sure it doesn't have the if killed by player condition or else it won't actually spawn in the item. So now we have it inside of entities, our custom JSON loot table, and we have our blocks custom JSON loot table. And that is under our custom LT demo folder. Now that is what you want to do if you are going to make a custom mob that you will manually spawn in through a data pack or some other command that will have its own loot table or if you're going to be replacing the loot table of a chest or something using commands. But if you want a normal natural Minecraft mob to have their normal loot table overwritten, what you want to do is go into the Minecraft folder instead of the LT demo folder. If you don't have one, make one. But you should have one because that's where you put your tick.json file. But anyway, go into that Minecraft folder and then create a new folder called loot underscore tables, all lowercase and underscore. And then go in there, make one called entities, and then make one called whatever the mob you're trying to override, spider, um, creeper or whatever you want it to be and then just put dot json but it's still the same file you just renamed it and the reason you rename it is so that the game knows that you are trying to overwrite that uh, matching mob so now if we go into the game I'll show you what it has done so if I summon a minecraft spider that's not the one that I overwrote but if I put death loot table colon and then you have to put the namespace so lt underscore demo colon entities slash demo demo is the name of the json file lt demo is the folder that i had the entities block and the loot table json inside of and then entities was what was holding the json file so now if i spawn this spider you will see that when it dies it drops the custom loot table 
and the diamond was guaranteed and then the iron and gold was kind of random. Now if I spawn a normal creeper in, since I overwrote creeper.json, what will happen is that the creeper will drop it. So as you can see, diamond guaranteed, but the iron and gold was random, so this time I did not get gold. And also, if you want to do the block one, what you do is you set a block, and then in the NBT data, you put, so it's a chest or a hopper or something like that, then you put loot table with capital L and T, colon, and then within quotes, whatever your folder name is, colon, blocks, slash, whatever your JSON file loot table is called. And you don't need the replace, but it doesn't really matter what you put there. But if you summon this in, you'll see that the loot table was randomly generated using your custom loot table. Now you can also use the slash loot command. You may find this useful. You may not find this useful, but I'll show it to you anyway. So first we have replace, so slash loot. So this is for something that's already existing instead of summoning in a chest. So slash loot, and then we have replace block. And then we just select the block's coordinates. And then you could just select whatever container for it to start with. And then you switch to loot. And you go down to the block slash demo. Or whatever yours is called. And it'll just summon in the stuff. I already had some loot in here. That's why it's filled up partially already. And you can also use it for replacing entity. So slash loot replace. And then you could go entity and select an entity that you would like to replace the loot table of. Now we also have insert, so this will just put it into the chest. So if we go slash loot insert and then select the coordinates, loot and select blocks, we don't actually have to specify a container and it'll just shove it right into here. Now we also have spawn, so this is if you want the actual item to come out. So you do slash loot spawn and then just select the coordinates where you want the items to drop, loot and then switch it to block slash demo or whatever yours is called. Just hit enter and the items will just fly out. So if I just spam this, you'll see the loot table and how there's a guaranteed diamond, but then random golden iron. And now we have give, which is pretty obvious what it does. You do slash loot, give, and then you just select a player. I'll just select the entity running the command and then loot and I'll do block slash demo. And like I said earlier, if you are going to have something that says if killed by player, make sure you only use that loot table for a mob that is actually meant to be killed by the player. Because if you use it by anything else, the item that you marked as only going to be dropped if the player kills it will never be given because a player can't kill it unless it's actually a mob. So thank you guys for watching my video on how to make loot tables. I hope you can use this to create whatever custom mobs or custom chests you're going to be making. So if you could leave a like and subscribe then that would be much appreciated. And my next video is going to be a video on how to use the slash execute command. So stay tuned and see you in the next one.